Hello fellow simmers and YouTube subscribers of the BLS channel. It is finally here and it's released. Finally we have it. It's the Armstrong Powerhouse Class 37 Pack Volume 2. Fantastic. We've been waiting for this and highly anticipating this for quite some time now. Okay, so this is Samuel Beeman talking of British Locomotive Studios and I'm here doing a first look review of the locomotive. So what I've done is I've plonked it down onto the Just Trains North Norfolk Railway with a couple of AP coaches and I've, named, I've numbered it to the resident of the railway number D6732 and for uh, realistic purposes I have also turned it round the correct way so the number two end is facing towards Holt and number one end is heading towards Sheringham so we're going to get a little bit of um, both horns as it were because I'm sure there'll be different horns on either end of this pack from obviously Sheringham to Holt return Okay, so without further ado, let's get into this and drive our locomotive from Sheringham to Holt on the Just Trains North Norfolk Railway. So, basically, we've been waiting for this pack for quite some time now. So, originally, obviously, we had the 37 Volume 1 pack, which was using the, basically, a recycled AP Wherry Lines uh, Class 37 sound set, which was recorded from the Wensleydale Class 37. It is also a well-known sound set on, on, like, sound decoders and things for double O-gauge trains, actually, from Legoman Biffo. Um, but basically, yeah, that locomotive is quite a common sound set. But anyway, here we are with our Class 37 Nort on the North North Railway by Just Trains. And here we are at Sheringham Station. And already, doesn't this just look an absolute beast? I mean, look at this. Okay, so let's, let's have a look around the model at first. Let's start this off. Okay, so we have the original skirts on here with the obviously the blue stars either side there which look really nice i mean the high definition visuals on them buffers <laughs> wow now that is impressive you can see the grease the sort of uh, the hole in the middle there and also you have a nice crisp sort of rust texture on there and it doesn't look fake i mean christ what a fantastic job these guys deserve a massive pat on the back already. I mean, look at that. Doesn't that just look fantastic? I'm already smiling. <laughs> this is fantastic. Okay, so we also have, obviously, the appropriate pipes, uh, vacuum hoses, air hoses, etc., along with the, uh, the chain link coupling there. Um, moving up, we have all of the riveting on the, uh, the, the doors there, you know, the door hinges and lamp irons and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> this is just looking absolutely fantastic. Already chuffed to bits. I'm loving the weathering work on those head codes there, and I believe they are working head codes, although I do not know how to actually use them at the moment. But we'll soon try and find that out later on in the video. So we've seen the front end and it is looking absolutely fantastic. We even have some nice weathering on the ETH cable there, which looks absolutely fantastic as well. Uh, coming down to the bogies, we have the BR uh, signs on the bearing caps there, which just look, oh, it's just, it, it is just fantastic already, it really is. Um, we have the chains and the springs there looking all very realistic. The cab steps heading up with holes in them, heading up towards the cab side there. And we also have the nice crisply applied D6732 numbering there, which is all done very nicely. And we have handrails and the door handle all completely 3D. We also have some weathering on the windows where you can see the sort of rain marks where the rain has come down and it's just dried off like that. I mean, that is just fantastic, it really is. We also have nice 3D grill texturing on there as well on the body side along with some windows to the engine room and also holes and other bits and pieces within the side. We even have the guttering on the side there at the top near the roof. I mean it's just as real as it gets isn't it really. Um, and also we have the sort of indentation sort of texturing on the side of the bodywork there which just looks absolutely stunning. It really does. And also the crisp BR emblem there, which is 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 eligible. You can read it perfectly. 100% full 1080p HD texturing. 
Well, this has been such a long-awaited thing since the QG model. I mean, the QG model, compared to this, is just absolute trash. Um, so let's continue looking at this. So we also have all the sanding pipes there as well, which absolutely look, look well, they, they're there and they look great. We also have all the, 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 the cylinders on the side of the bogey frames there. And we have the fuel dial on the side of the fuel tank there, which looks very nice. We also have all of these uh, other bits and pieces like pipe work. I uh, don't necessarily know what they're for, but they're there and look quite nice and present. We also have all the fueling caps there, which are all nice and present, as well as this circular disc here with the rivets along the side there. Uh, we, we also, obviously we have this other bogey, which is basically the same as the other one. We have a frost grill on there, which is technically incorrect for D6732 because it doesn't actually have a frost grill on the real one. But, uh, I mean, I don't know how you take that off. There must be a way of taking it off. Um, we've also got like streaking underneath that frost grill there, which looks very nice. Uh, again, coming around the back here, we have obviously the rear uh, cab and front end. <laughs> the, 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 it just looks so realistic. I mean, you can see the head codes there just look realistic and nice there. It's fantastic. We have 3D grills on there. I mean, this is TSW quality. In fact, this is better than TSW. I mean, if you look at the 37 that we reviewed in TSW, it's just absolutely nothing compared to this. We also have this fire alarm test thing here, which looks quite good. I mean, I believe it's something to do with the fire alarm anyway. Okay, so we've had a look. Uh, we've got the, oh, Christ. We've got the uh, Danger Live warning stickers there, which look really nice and crisp. Uh, coming to the top of the roof here, we have some nice weathering around the roof. This is using the lightly weathered variant, so there's probably uh, more weathered variants within this pack. But we've got all of the riveting and all of the panelling, all very nice and looking absolutely unbelievable. We also have the grill here, which just looks absolutely amazing. Look at this. You can see the sort of zigzaggy pattern on that grill there. And it's just, it is... The fan is spinning there, looking really nice. It's just, it's something else, it really is. We also have the doors on top of the bonnet there, which look really nice. It just, all of it looks absolutely unbelievable. It's unreal. We also have all the handrails around the front ends and stuff like that as well, and the indentations on the sides. Uh, it's breathtaking already, it really is. I am, <laughs> I am over the moon to this. This is already a 10 out of 10 pack, I tell you. We also have all the riveting along the seals down there as well, which look absolutely spectacular. Okay, so let's continue our work and review on this. So basically, let's select our loco now and head into our cab. So at the moment, we'll be situated in the number one end cab, which, oh my God, look at this. We have a crisp treatment of electric shock signs we have the danger you know signs here can we open the engine room door probably not i mean it's just you know you can't really do that in here we've got yep opening and closing doors opening and closing windows oh this is fantastic we have all of the you know the crisp warning signs and other bits and pieces air pass absolutely fantastic we even have weathering on the windows we have weathering in the cab look at this look at all this it is just absolutely amazing we've got all the screws in here we've got all of the hd texturing on the weathering here oh, the wooden textures just look so realistic man look at this it is absolutely stunning um we've got the root indicator lights, tail lights, instrument lights, cab lights, interior lights. I believe these all work. I mean, it'd be crazy if they don't. Um, got our oh, fantastic texturing on the, uh, on, on the on the seat there. So what are our views in the cab? Let's have a look. So we've got a moving further back view. We've got a, oh Christ, look at that, yes. Oh yes, look at that. I just, it just, doesn't it just look good? Look at all this HD texturing, guys. Look at this. Look at all these pipes. Just look at it. Look at that. Just look at it. It is just absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> wow. It's just unbelievable. 
Okay, so let's move on. We've got we've got the sticker up here just just peeling off. It's just everything about this is just unbelievable. We've got all the like warmness of the of, of the seals around the edges of the windows. I mean, how awesome can this pack get? I mean, just look at this texture in, man. Oh, it's stunning. Okay, so uh, let's head over to the second man side. I can't stop smiling over this. Okay, so we've got the parking brake wheel. This is better than volume one pack, I tell you. Um, it's just, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, yeah, look at this. Oh, look, we've even got views looking out the back as well on the back wall. It's just, it's breathtaking, it really is. And we've got obviously the AWS stuff. Does the fire bell check work? I believe it's F, that's the fire bell check. Oh, yes. It even moves. I mean, just look at that. Okay, so let's take our master key out. Um, is that the master key in? I can't really tell. How do we take our master key out? I've forgotten how to use this stuff. Now, I believe I've just accidentally uh, turned the AW. Yeah, we want to turn that off. So we want to change ends. So we're going to go over to the other end, aren't we? That's what we want. Sorted on that. Um, we want to turn our marker lights off, and I believe this is by K and Control A. K, yeah, there we are. We want to turn our head codes on. Is it H? No, maybe not. Okay, how do we turn the head codes on? Well, we'll we'll, we'll turn it on in the cab. So we've got uh, root indicator lights. Oh yes, look at that, fantastic. I don't know how you move these head code blinds, but we'll soon find out about those at some point. Um, oh yes, look at the cab light illumination. We've even got a different back wall in this, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a back wall with all of the brake selector switches and all of that jazzy stuff. The fire alarm and look at that, the brake selector. So we want vacuum. Vacuum passenger. Great, so we set that to vacuum passenger. That's good news, we've all sorted on that front. Um, so, let's get ourselves moving. So let's pull our window down. I believe from the outside the window will also be pulled down. It has indeed, look at that. Turn our motor factor up, I love how you can do this. I believe it's shift, yep, we want it on full. Clag factor, we definitely want that on full. Just gonna turn our volume slightly up there just so we can hear it properly. Um, there we go so we want to have our window hanging view as we like this so I believe we're all set for going now our brakes look as if though they are released so we can now depart Shangham station and give us a toot on the horn oh yes listen to that okay off we go something I haven't done. Oh yeah, of course. I've forgotten how you do this, so we're, we're Our pedal down there so how do we change the brake is it I'm gonna have to read the manual on this I think um ah oh, there it's ah oh, that's it that's that's it right so we've got to wait for our brakes to release now we're just there as we can see we can see our pressure gauges coming up on our instrument lights there wait for our brakes. Oh, this is fantastic. Look at this. The, the, the physics on this are absolutely unbelievable, really are. Um, okay, so we've got our brakes released now. So let's depart now. 
Off we go, okay. Listen to that, okay, great stuff. I'm gonna turn this up a little bit so we can hear it a little bit better on my Oh yes, we've got the bogey sounds. We've got the nice bogey sounds, it's great stuff. Yeah, 10 mile an hour limiting on here. Oh yes! I'm going to be on this all night now, I just know it. <laughs> this is just, this is fantastic already. This is absolutely fantastic already. Okay, so this is us leaving Sheringham Station on the North Norfolk by Just Trains. So you can get this route from Just Trains, I believe, for about £25. Uh, it's a nice representation of the North Norfolk. It's not 100% accurate, but it is what we've got and it's nice. We have some nice bits and pieces for it. Obviously we have some nice custom buildings as well, like this house over here and the golf course. And yeah, it's a nice route. We've even got the atmospheric uh, crossing sounds. So this sound set was recorded from the Epping and Onga Railways uh, resident class 37 D6729 aka 37029 uh, as stated by AP which is a really beast of a 37 actually one of the best to record so you know he's done a good job in the old sound department can we open it up now not yet just need to clear the crossing right let's do it come on let's listen to it Field diverts and everything. Yes, I am over speeding slightly at five mile per hour. I just wanted to give it a bit of a, a bit of a bit of some welly because I that is just absolutely incredible, it really is. Um, absolutely incredible. <laughs> listen to the in-cab sounds. <laughs> it sounds oh, it sounds even better the horn in the cab from this end. Oh yes. Oh, so we, I believe these moved and you can move these with the mouse. Oh okay no no you can't. Okay I believe in the original one you could move these with the mouse. Hopefully not. Oh, it's a good, good, good time with the horn there because we're actually coming over a foot crossing now. There's a woman down there. Look, look at that. The frame rates on this route for some reason aren't doing too well today. I don't know why that is. With the mouse, you can't really use the brakes very well with the mouse, I must admit. So you have to really use the keyboard with these controls. It's an advanced loco, so you're, you're more likely to use the keyboard controls with the braking on this loco because purely because it's not really designed for using the mouse on it. 
that's what I've noticed with some of AP's advanced logos. And as we can see, we've got some poppies along the side to resemble the poppy line, which is what the Sheringham to Holt line is actually nicknamed. So it's the North North Railway Poppy Line, uh, and that is what it's named after. I have noticed I've got some uh, a reasonable amount of Facebook messages coming through, so I'm just going to check those while my audio recording is going um, on. Uh, oh, it's just it's nothing it's nothing really majorly important as such as far as i can see on here so let's just continue with what we're doing and yeah oh yes we can open it up again let's have a listen let's view it from outside of the cat oh, okay so oh, that's a shame you can't really lean out from this cab why can't you do that it's a shame isn't it a geese is in the cab though, that's good. If we listen to it from a distance. Oh, look at that. Okay, off we go. Unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. Fantastic piece of kit, absolutely fantastic piece of kit. Oh, it even sounds good inside. Even the cab sounds are good in this. Oh, guys, I'm really impressed with this. And you can't beat a good old split box 37 either. It's just something about them. It's something that the enthusiasts love as well. I must admit though, I would like to have heard the sounds to be slightly louder. I do find them to be reasonably quiet. Um, to get the very best out of this pack, I'd have to put this my sound volume up to full, which you wouldn't usually have to do. Um, obviously, I'm not going to do it now because obviously we're going to obviously cause issues with the audio recordings and stuff as well. Um, oh, that's the wrong button there. Wayborn. I need to get used to driving this. That drive's lovely, but obviously it's just getting used to used to using it really, I suppose. So we'll release the brake now and we'll um, put the train brake on and then we'll engine only I believe somebody said this that you have to do it on the YouTube channel somebody uh, whoever commented a while back about the fact that I don't put stuff into engine only uh, that there you go I'll put it in engine only this time there we go so we open up the doors how far are we actually out of the station did we overshoot no we're actually in it fantastic look at that
sounds like there's a change in sound as you walk around the locos. Oh Christ, look at that. Oh yes. Okay. One Z seventy three. Oh, we got the right away. Off we depart. Forward. Yes, there we are. We've got, we've got the signal now. We're all good. We've got a window hang out of this. This is Kellin Bank, ladies and gents. Kellin Bank. So this is where it all happens. This is the gradient. <laughs> yes. Listen to that. Right. We ain't got to the 25 mark yet. <laughs> we can give it some beans. Oh, oh we got the 25 mark. Fantastic. We can. Let loose now. Let's do it. So take it away, D6732. Spine tinglingly good this this pack. It really is. I'm just having so much fun with this, like, it's just honestly... <laughs> the transitions! The transitions on sound on this is ace. They have done, it is edited with precision. The transitions between the engine sounds, the, the notching up, the notching down, all of it is done with precision. Do you see how I just, you know, notched it down and just kept notching it up, down the notches like that and the way it just sort of transitioned like that was picture perfect. Okay, so we're just gonna notch it up now. Go to notch one. It's nothing really too spectacular. Notch two. Now we're getting somewhere. Three. Starting to sound pretty good. Four. <laughs> and all the way to four. Ah. 
And I mean, the field diverts in this thing is absolutely amazing. It really is. What a marvellous bit of kit this is. Now, I, I don't know what's going on my frame rates in this route at the minute because for some reason my frame rates are a little bit dodgy. I don't know what that is or why that's doing that. Um, whether it's something to do with this route, I don't know. Uh, but hey ho. Coming up to Holt now, we've got some uh, coaching stock in the sidings, as you can see there, in our the coach yard at Holt. I'm going to head over to this side, this is where we see Holt Station coming up this side here. Oh, it looks like we've got a steam locomotive in there, in, in, in the, oh, what's that doing there? We can't be having this. Oh, don't tell me it's on a train. Oh no, I'm not driving that. Is there a way of changing the AI so it can move out and leave? That would be nice. If I come crashing into that local, I'll be really annoyed. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I do not believe it. This cannot be. This cannot be correct. It is as well. Look at this. Look at that. I mean, that is just fantastic scenario editing right there. Look at that. Why is there a black five in Holt? I didn't even place that in there. Oh, bollocks, another freaking... Xbox has started up because I knocked the freaking uh, controller on the floor. Oh, this is going great, this is. We do apologise, passengers, but there has been a slight delay due to a obstruction in front of the line that we very much almost crashed right into. So the signalman, being a dopey asshole, can now switch the points to the correct way. There we go. But then I suppose it's equally the driver's fault for not looking at the home signal on the way into the station. Which obviously the home signal clearly stated that I should not pass. Anyway. Despite that slight issue, we are now going to proceed back into Holt Station. And then we're going to remove the hideous Black Five out of the station where we can run round our train. I mean, the clag effects on this are absolutely fantastic as well. Like, obviously, we do like a bit of AP clag. And they really have perfected this within this game. Synchronisation and the way it looks. Very realistic looking diesel clag. You can almost smell it. It just looks that realistic in that sense. Very well done. It sounds like the Black 5 has hideous default sounds on it as well, it does. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. We can't be having that in there. Um. If 
if there was any way of um, collecting these coaches, I'd take it with a 37, but... Oh, it drives beautifully, absolutely fantastic. Also, the, the squeal on the brakes, it's great, it really is. All right, let's put our loco brake on. And we'll leave that there for now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another review. Here we have the rail simulator. <laughs> Here we have the 2007 Rail Simulator Kyuju Black 5. Oh, just look at this. Look at this fantastic modelling we have here. I mean, look at the pixelated buffer beam and fantastic detail on the, uh, on the coupling chains there. I mean, this was really good for its time as well. I used to remember being gobsmacked in 2007 when I first laid my eyes on this. I used to think this was absolutely incredible. Um, obviously we have all the detail on the wheels, like obviously the rivets and stuff like that. I mean, back in the day, I mean, I used to think, core bloody hell, look how realistic this looks. Because you think that we upgraded from Microsoft Train Simulator to this. This was the starting point, this was the breaking point for the newest and modern simulators, was this Kiju Black 5 here. Obviously, nowadays, all we can say is that it is an absolute pile of shit. Because, uh, in all honesty, compared to everything else that has been released, it is now absolutely pants and is completely outdated. Um, but, obviously, you know, here we have it, right here, right now. And I'm showing it to you in this video as an extra special. Look at that. Okay, so let's select our QG Black 5. And we need to move it somewhere out of the way. So it can, uh, so we can actually move our 37 out of the way, as it were. Okay, so we're gonna move forward. Uh, the trouble is, I don't know if this coach in stock. How many coaches have we got here? We've got one, two, three, four, five. I know what I can do. In fact, I'll tell you what I can do. I'll hitch this on the back of the 37 stock. Yes, what a fantastic idea. Okay, we'll do that. So be ready for the delights and sounds of the Kyuju Black 5, ladies and gentlemen. The revolutionary locomotive. As you can see, we have a nicely detailed cab. Looks absolutely spectacular. Let's put our uh, cylinder cocks on here and move our loco forward. Ah, yes, listen to that fantastic brake sound. Great stuff. Okay, so let's move our Kyuju Black 5 out of the way. Let's get this heap out of the way. Okay. But yes, there we are. Off we go. Listen to this. Ah, oh, just oh, absolutely fantastic, isn't it? It's just brilliant. It's just fantastic. I mean, it's even going to have a Kyuju clatter, which we all love. Ah, oh, listen to that. You can't beat it, can you? The revolutionary sound of a black fire and tracing. I mean, back in the day, this used to be absolutely fantastic. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add it to the back of the 37's train. So then we can have a bit of a longer rake as our return journey down to Sheringham.
Yeah. Listen, so we've got the AP sounds on the Mark One coaches. This is the AP sound pack on those. Oh, listen to that brake release sound. Connect these to our end of our train here to make a bigger set. Oh, shh. Oh. Yeah, that was a bit of a harsh, um, uh, yeah, connecting up there. Um, let's unhook our 37 first before coupling up our stock here. now hitched up to that stop there so we can now move our 37 out of the way and off we go seems to be going why is it why is it going the wrong way A bugbearer now, yeah. Okay. <sighs> Perfect. So we want to turn our route indicator lights off now. We want to shut down this cab, so yeah, turn that to off. Put our brakes in on completely off. There we are. Change end switch. on, tail lights off, our points are set, great, window down, indicate lights on, oh yes, listen to that. Listen to it from the outside. Oh. Yes! Such a great horn. Listen to that. I mean, that, that is, that out of the two, uh, I actually prefer that horn, to be fair. Yeah, that's, that's proper. Absolutely proper. So let's park 
why have I got route indicator lights on the other end as well again? We need to turn those off. Okay, so put our loco into the platform and leave it there for now. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? All right, so okay, so we're all good. That end now. Okay, we're all good. We're all good. We're all good. So now we can get rid of our hideous black five off of the stock by smashing it and then taking it off somewhere else out of the way so we can just forget that this ever happened and say goodbye to this hideous piece of garbage. In fact, the quicker way of getting rid of this and disposing of this loco would be to put it into the carriage sidings down here, which is exactly what we're going to be doing. A bit of rare footage for you here, guys. We're doing a, a run on the <laughs> Kiju Black 5, listening to the fantastic sounds of the horse clattering sounds of the rail joints which sounds literally like somebody... God knows what they sound like. back and forget that that ever happened. Goodbye Black Five. See you later. You will not be missed. There we are. That's the end of that then. It's goodbye to that. Now back to the real deal which is this AP37. Messages on Facebook again. Let's have a look. See. No, great. Fantastic bit of kit this. Absolutely fantastic bit of kit. Okay, so we've got a very long train now on our return trip down to Sheringham. Oh, it just drives absolutely beautifully this thing, it really does. Okay, so we couple those up now, 
and do ourselves our brake test. So. Make sure we have vacuum. I believe we are still set to vacuum, so we should be okay. Put ourselves into forward. Yep, we've got brake. So. There we are. So it's right away to Sheringham. Oh, you can even hear it inside. Wheel slip. Oh, I blew my ampage. I think I just blew one of the traction motors. Oh, damn. Oh, she's really struggling with this lot. You can tell. Oh, yes! I, the, it has the, 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 the immersion of weight behind it. You can feel the weight behind it. That physics is absolutely stunning. You can feel the difference in weight with a longer train. Now, that is something really good. Love that low tone. <laughs> that's that's lovely. All right, so we're hitting the 25 mark now. Fantastic. Have a look at her coming down the hill, shall we? Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Look at the sway of the, uh, the body. The body sways when you put power on it. That's fantastic, brilliant. Accelerating at quite an excessive rate.
So what do I think of it? Well, oh, look, we've even got the instrument light dimmer, which dims, obviously, you know, and, and dimmons. So what do I think of it? Well, I think we can safely say that this is certainly a 10 out of 10 in the means of content for Train Simulator 2020. Um, it is by far one of the best DLC that I, well, have owned within this game so far. It, the detail is stunning, the sounds is stunning, uh, obviously, you know, it would, would be nice to maybe, well, I mean, I mean, to be honest, they are growing on me a lot more since we started. Um, and it's just, honestly, why can't we have more content like this? Absolutely fantastic. What would be nice is if we could get a class 26 in the game, actually, uh, for the Kyle of the Couch line, because they are very common around the Scottish area on Kyle of the Couch. Same with a decent 27, because we don't actually have any decent Scottish locos, certainly not Soulsers. And I do think that the Type 2s lack within the game. The Souls of Type 2s need a lot more bit of attention within this game. Uh, we, need to, we need the Souls of Type 2s to have some attention, we really do. I don't believe it, I've gone in the wrong platform. I would have thought that would be set into the other... Oh, oh well, let's just forget about that now. It's done now. It's in the wrong platform. <laughs> But, where are we going? Maybe the other platform's not in use or something, I don't know. But here we are, Wayborn again. We've got all the nice custom signs on Wayborn Station, look. We have the Wayborn sign there, which looks all really nicely done there, looking good. Longer train now, so it's slightly different, isn't it? Just look at this. I mean, come on. I'm going to screenshot this. for our thumbnail, there we are. D6732 on the North Norfolk Railway. Off we go, I heard the right away, so we have got clear clearance to go. Let's lean out. Oh, I don't like that. When you come in, you notice that there's a sort of slight bug issue there. When you come back into the cab, you hear the spool down sound, which is randomly. Uh, I think it was like that in volume one of the 37s as well. You had that sort of slight issue in that sort of sense. Okay, so we're coming up to the 25 mark now, so we'll soon be able to open the locomotive up and listen to her sing again. So we've got to make sure our coaches are clear of the 25 mark before we 
give it some beans. Mind you, we're going downhill, which is just a massive disappointment, which means we aren't going to be able to thrash it very much because we are literally going to be flying down the hill. Oh, that's, that's a disappointment, isn't it? Okay, so we've passed the 25 marks. Just give it some a little bit. As you can see, as we're flying down the hill, we can't really give it as much as what we would. Pull down in the cab again. Now there's a gradient coming up at some point, a slight one heading towards this, uh, showing them. Don't worry about me over speeding, I'm just literally over speeding because of the timings of the video, obviously. You know, I don't want to make this video too long although it has been going on now for over an hour so it's going to be quite a long one Get some braking because that is a bit over speeding ahead of a lot now We are pretty much flying down here now. I believe this is the gradient now up here, it is. We've got a nice sort of ski jump there. Be back into showing them in no time. There's stickers on the side there, look. It says, <laughs> ah, yes, look, there's a little, um, a uh, cameo of see Armstrong and Power Limited. That's really clever, actually. That I've done that. It's like a little cameo of uh, Armstrong Powerhouse there. mile an hour limit now to come into showing them so we're gonna to have to slow up Mm. 
haven't got ashtrays look here, look, which would be really nice. No, it's really cool, isn't it? Adjustable heights and seats, maybe not. Ear protection must be warned. Look at that, look at that. got here ah yes we're going into the platform we're going into correct platform this time fantastic Not like last time I think the game automatically brought me into the right platform that's why I've changed it because I changed it in the thought that I would go into the wrong platform but I went into the wrong platform when I changed it um, oh, but then again I was come out of this platform when I started didn't I yeah. God knows But here we are, arriving in Sheringham. We have the uh, Sheringham sign. I mean, the station at Sheringham is very well done. It's it's very well represented, as we can see here. We have the calf on the left-hand side of the buffet there, look, looking, looking very nice. It is prototypical to how Sheringham looks in reality. But it's really well done, actually. To showing them station itself. Put our brake on and stick ourselves into engine only. There we go. Open our doors because we are leaving the cab. Sounds like a train sim world, isn't it? But here we are back at showing them station, and all passengers are happy and safe and back. Almost had a collision with a black five, but it was done semi-smoothly and that is a really nice screenshot so I'm going to take another one there there we go okay so this this has been our video and review on the new Armstrong powerhouse class 37 locomotive pack volume 2 I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video and uh, obviously don't forget to comment like and subscribe if you've liked it and enjoyed it and if you have any questions about any future content with us uh, like you know any products that you have questions about or what we've reviewed or even you know some of our own products you know that we are planning on releasing for train simulator or trains you know with the Z with the sounds and stuff um, but yeah so thanks for watching guys uh, oh I don't know how we did the head codes but I'm sure we'll find that in another day. I mean, does it really need to be covered? That is the thing. Not really. I mean, I've covered pretty much the main aspects of this pack. So, uh, well, obviously the green 37. I'm not going to do all the liveries and stuff. It's just mainly looking at the sounds and the sights and the looks. And obviously, you know, the physics of the engine. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. This has been Samuel Beeman of BLS. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye for now. Ta-da! Yes. Goodbye. Goodbye for now. Yes. And goodbye from D6732.